Greg Doyle with his grandma, Ruby Doyle, on a Christmas Day, photo, Doyle family. It came in the mail, one of those sweet Christmas cards with a cartoon on the cover. I don't remember the cartoon, but I remember what she'd tucked inside, a $5 bill. And I remember the signature. Grandma. Most of all, I remember what happened when I called my dad and told him what his mama, my grandma, had given me for my 17th Christmas. I remember the silence. And then I could hear him. I could hear my dad crying. My dad doesn't know how long he lived in that chicken coop. It wasn't too terribly long, three or four weeks at the most, and to be honest it wasn't much of a drop-off from his previous home, a one-bedroom house with no running water, electricity or gas. That's where Dewey and Ruby Doyle had most of their ten children in the small Oklahoma town of Shawnee, named for the Native American tribe that had settled there. They gave their children names like Marvin and Weldon, Juanita and Peggy, and eventually Dewey left for good. A despicable man, Dewey had left Grandma once before, left her alone with nine kids, only to return long enough to have a tenth. They named him Robert Leon Doyle. I call him Dad. Ruby Cannon Doyle was raising her youngest seven kids in that pitiful house when it burned to the ground. She was a washerwoman with no water of her own, so she'd fill buckets at a neighbor's outdoor faucet and heat the water on the coal oil cook stove in her tiny kitchen. Then she'd dump the water into a metal wash tub and use a washboard to scrub the clothes. At night she'd get more water and heat it and dump it into that same tub, where my dad took a bath. Grandma was cooking with kerosene on that cook stove on December. 18, 1949, when a gust of wind exploded through that wood house at 603 W. For all and blew the fiery oil all over the walls. The thin strips of pasteboard nailed to the walls was a ramshackle form of insulation, and textbook tinder. One of the few things Grandma managed to save was the toy fire truck she'd wrapped up for Christmas for my dad. The Shawnee News Star has a picture of him playing with the fire truck, shortly after the fire left my dad homeless. He was four. This 1949 article details the fire that destroyed the home of Ruby Doyle. Photo, Shawnee News Star. This is a Christmas story, not a sad story, and it was the generosity of that small town 40 miles east of Oklahoma City that put Grandma and her seven kids into another house. Calvary Baptist Church gave $100 in seed money for a fund whose goal was $1,000 for a down payment on a $2,800 home on Park Street. Churches all over town took up special offerings for the Doyle family and donations were made to the local newspaper and to County Commissioner A.C. Stapp's office at the Pottawatomie County Courthouse. The paper printed names of donors, a car dealer gave $5. The children's Sunday school class at Wesley Methodist donated $4.82. The Shawnee Planing Mill gave $2, and the Aldridge Barber Shop $1. A man named Bob Tyler gave 50 cents. Within a day the town had raised $365. By week's end the total was $1,126.47.